Hi everybody, my name is Hayden and I'm here today to talk about unit tests and component tests, in particular with React.js. So, as you know, the, there's a broad testing concept that we've talked about in the course, and then there's two key tenets that follow that. One is the unit testing, component testing, which is where we look at particular React components and we test those. And the other one is your integration testing or UI testing, which is where we look at how all of these pieces fit together and try and emulate how the user does it. We're going to be talking about that first component today um, and give you a little bit of an example. This is a very light lecture where we're going to give you one example that you can take and maybe tweak and then use the APIs we give you to explore more with it. Um, and this lecture in particular is one that is not core to my background, um, so I'm no expert on the matter either. Um, so I'll do my absolute best for you. So firstly, from the introduction lecture, component testing is this process of unit testing where we ensure that uh, all of our framework's components, regardless of how they're integrated into the broader app, function as expected. So it's about the individual pieces. There are two main libraries that we're going to be using when it comes to testing in React.js. The first one is probably the most popular, I would guess, uh, JavaScript testing framework, which is Jest. Um, and Jest here is, it's like a, it's like a runner, uh, it, it helps like organize and run tests. Think of it like a, um, the actual vehicle that tests run in. You know, it's like a container a pipeline, if you will. Um, so most other testing libraries are actually built off Jest sometimes because it gives a good solid framework. Jest can be used with Angular, Vue.js, other frameworks, probably Vanilla.js as well. Um, so it's very much a core thing. Then we're going to be using another library called Enzyme, and Enzyme is a unit testing framework that's specific to React.js. So it's kind of built on top of Jest, um, but it, it makes it a lot easier to work with React components. So it's a nice abstraction of React, and obviously because it's more specific than Jest, it allows us to um, uh, you know, write less code in a way that Jest doesn't. Because if Jest kind of dealt with React and Angular and all these other things, it would just be really bloated. So we're going to be using these libraries in combination. Now, to install these and um, to work with the examples that we're giving, you will have to do these installations yourself as well. Thankfully, Create React App, which is the library that's used to set up a basic React application, actually installs many of the dependencies we need um, in relation to Jest. There's one small thing that's missing from that, um, and then we also need to install Enzyme as well. Um, but if you're using Create React App to create your um, application, or in the case of the assignments we provide, we've given you the stub code with the Create React App stub code, then you only need to run these two individual lines here. And I'll just quickly demonstrate that for you. So uh, if you, um, I'm just going to make a, a really simple example here. Um, npx uh, example CRA, create React app, um, and we're going to create ourselves a React app. I'm just going to pause the video while this runs because it will take a few minutes. All right, welcome back. Um, so the create React app has created a basic React app for us in the folder example CRA. And if I go inside that folder, there's a whole bunch of files here. Now we're used to this file structure because <coughs> um, you've seen it in tutorials and labs, but here's a key file to notice that we're going to be building off, and that's inside the source folder here. Now inside the source folder, you'll see there's a file called setuptest.js. Now, what is setuptest.js? It is this file here. Um, it simply is a single import, um, testing library slash jestdom, and this is a file that the jest runner will uh, kind of run in anticipation for running all the tests. So it's kind of like a setup file. That's like why it's called setup test. So when you're in create react app and you're in your main project folder and you run yarn test, yarn test, if we go to package.json, we'll call react scripts test, which is a react scripts is like a, a library that create react app uses. It is a wrapper to call the underlying jest test. So when I run yarn test here, you'll see that, um, well, you won't see it, but it will, it will work with setup tests and it will create the environment with Jest. And if I, um, you can see here it says no test found related. Um, press A to run all tests. I press A and it will uh, run the test 
that React.js ships with. So let me just open that folder. Uh, and sorry, when I say React.js ships with, I mean create React app ship, ships with. So here's our app.js file. And if we have a look at our app test.js file, um, the point is, is that this app.test and any .test.js file is run as part of the testing process. And this setup test file is included right at the start to do the setup. You can see um, how a basic test with Jest in this case works is we include some kind of library. This is not with Enzyme, by the way. This is just with the basic Jest testing. Um, we're testing something. This is just the name we give to the test. We pass it a function to execute. We say that we want to render the app component. Um, and then we are going to uh, pick a piece of text, which is learn React. And then we're going to make sure that it's in the document. So a lot of the Jest language is kind of built around um, this fairly straightforward API, which is where you say expect, you give it an element, and then you kind of check something on that element. In this case, what we're saying is expect that this element here, learn react, is in the document. Now, this isn't a great unit test because it's, it's a bit more high level than this. When I say we're testing the app component, the app component is kind of the root element. So you, you wouldn't really be doing a lot of these kinds of tests. Normally, you'd be putting in your, um, you know, like a big brain button or something in here. The thing is that the tests we're going to work with, they look like this, except the some of the functions we use are a bit different. But they still have the same kind of, it's, it's wrapped in a test. We have a setup, and then we do an expect. We expect something to happen. And this is kind of the equivalent of your asserts or, or others. And it's testing this component here because we included it. I mean, it's automatically run when we run yarn test. Now, Jest is so easy to run, and you don't need to set up all these other things that you'll see in the integration UI testing lecture. And that's why these tend to be part of standard pipelines or even pre-commit hooks, so that sometimes you can't even commit your code unless it passes the tests or certain critical tests. And as part of pipelines that run um, on your Git server, like GitLab or GitHub, it will run these tests every time there's a major merge to master. Now, let's have a look at an example. Oh yeah, so to actually to actually work with the um, to actually work with the extra tools that we're encouraging to use in this course, you do have to yarn add React Test Renderer and you do have to yarn add Enzyme and the Enzyme Adapter as well. Now what you notice is in the case of these two ads, we have the dash dash dev flag here, and if you remember the dash dash dev flag, just as a reminder. Um, will add it to, if I go to package.json, it will add it as a dev dependency. <coughs> Same with this one, these two here. Um, these dev dependencies mean that when you yarn, yarn install or npm install, it will include those modules locally. But when you yarn build and you actually deploy your stuff, it will not package those up in the final transpiled JavaScript. And that will reduce the size of your bundle that is packaged up. So now that now I've installed those, now we'd actually go away and write a test like this. However, this demonstration just here was to show you it's very easy to create React app, install some stuff, and then you have a test already there waiting to go. But let's have a look at um, yep, let's have a look at a basic testing example. So we're going to look at a black box test for a simple React JS component, and that's this test here. This code, which you're welcome to copy is sitting in the component testing part of the lecture code that's provided to you. Um, and we're just going to walk through that kind of quickly. You'll notice that we have all the standard things. We've installed our enzyme adapter. Um, we've got enzyme here. In this case, in this piece of code, this should have been installed as a dev dependency, but I don't believe it was. Um, that's just a mistake. That's OK. You'll notice in the setup tests, file, we've added three lines. These three lines exist because of the addition of Enzyme. So remember, Create React App does a great job in setting up Jest for us, which is what this original line here is. But when we want to use the Enzyme libraries, um, we need to include these three lines. So if you're writing tests for your own assignment or a lab, you will include those three lines in your setup tests as well. 
Now let's actually have a look at uh, button.css. We, yeah, we do need that. Um, yes, let's have a look here. So on the left, we have our actual button. Let's quickly talk about what this does. It's a functional component. It takes in three props on click, title, which has a default value of click me exclamation mark, and mode. This function declares a variable called underscore class, which if mode set to dark, exactly dark, then it makes a dark mode, else any other value it sets the, the class to be light mode. And then all we do is our component itself returns a button component, a button HTML element um, that has an onclick value of the onclick that's passed in and it has a class name that is the name of whatever class we derived here. And then what's between those button open and close uh, tags is the title that's passed in. And if no title's passed in, we have the click me is given instead. So now that we understand the component, let's take a look at the tests themselves. So simple test file. What you will notice is that in different tests on different parts of, I guess, the internet, there will be different terminology used. So if we look back at the test that our create react app gives us by default, you can see that a test is actually opened by this word test. And this is more unit testing style. Whereas if you look here, this test kind of starts with describe. And these are all just different. Like I can Google this for you, right? So if I just, uh, just describe, um, you will see uh, where's the actual, yeah. Describe creates a block that groups together several related tests. For example, if you have a my beverage object that is supposed to be delicious but not sour, you could test it with this. So whether it's like describe or test, these are all semantic. And what I mean by semantic is that um, in most cases, they're actually just printing something. They're not actually like meaning something. <laughs> they're kind of like comments, like programmatic comments in a way. Uh, so you can use test, you can use describe depending on the specific thing you're trying to achieve. You can see on the Google page even it was like, um, however, you know, you can import describe, expect, test. There are certain design patterns that you can follow with tests, like there's um, just behavior driven development. Um, if you would, uh, you probably wouldn't look at this, but like you have behavior driven development, which is your like a given when then kind of style of stuff. Um, and you can find a lot of this inside of the actual Jest library uh, if you go looking for it. But because there's so much to testing and because this course is large enough in itself, we at least in at the time of this recording are not too fussed with the, you know, getting into the whole, this is the correct design theory because there's just too much to learn, right? It's meant to give you a taste into the basics of testing. So test here, describe here, somewhat the same thing. Describe is referring to the fact that we're describing a button's behavior in this sense. Uh, and this could be button, this could be lollipop, it doesn't matter, this is text. These strings are here for debugging purposes and reporting purposes. You can see that the describe function block that's called is we create ourselves a JavaScript object called no op, as in no operation, which is just an empty function, a function that takes in no parameters and has no effect at all, or it ha has no body. And then we're writing four, uh, five very straightforward tests, and they all use different parts of the uh, Jest library. So let me explain this to you here. When we say it, we're kind of showing a particular property of the button that we think should exist. So we're saying describe the button. It triggers an onclick event handle when clicked, that it uses a custom title, that it uses fallback title if none are provided, that it sets the provided mode, dark mode or light mode, and that it sets light mode if none is provided. So we're kind of describing these characteristics of the component here. In each of these it cases, we're also passing it a, an anonymous function, and this is the actual test execution here. Um, and you can see that five of them are pretty similar. In the first case, the on click that we're getting, we are using from the Jest library, um, there's a particular object called fn or function, which if you take this one, will kind of give you a dummy function that you can use to test with here. 
So we're creating this kind of like on click. We're not using the no op thing yet. Um, that is that is for later when we don't need to do anything. So we're creating uh, this on click, like a dummy on click that Jest provides. You notice we're not importing Jest. That is because I'm pr I'm pretty sure that as part of setup tests, um, many things are included globally. So one thing that hasn't been talked about a ton is the fact that when you import, like normally when you import something into a uh, JS file here, you are importing it into a particular variable or into a particular destructured object. Whereas if you just import something directly, you're essentially including those properties in the global scope. You will have noticed that um, we do similar things sometimes where we import CSS files like this, import app.css. We're essentially saying populate the global scope with everything that's in here. So how can we call Jest without actually importing it here? You know, it's not here. It's because as part of setup tests, I believe, we've included this item here, which puts all these things in the global namespace. Same with describe and it. That's how we can call these things so easily. So we have our own click. Now we use the enzyme library that comes from enzyme to uh, get a shallow instance of this button. So let's have a look at what shallow does. Let's go to enzyme shallow. So as part of Enzyme, there tends to be two types of rendering, because if you think about it, to test a React.js component, you kind of need to um, imagine in a little virtual world, you kind of need to render it quickly and then check properties of it. Shallow rendering is the process where you render just the, the component itself, but none of its children. Because as you know, in React, you have components, and they have components and components and components, right? It's a big nested structure. Shallow rendering is the process of just rendering your button, but not any children it has, because maybe inside your button you have more and more and more and more. So shallow here will generate a shallow render of this button. And what else we're going to do with Enzyme is we're going to simulate a click on that HTML element that, gener that is generated from it, right? So button gets rendered to a kind of an HTML element in general. And then we're going to simulate a click on that button. This is enzyme here. This, this makes writing this behavior very easy. Then we're going back to kind of the standard Jest library, which says we're going to expect that on click, this function here, to have been called one time. So we've created this function in Jest, and now we're checking that this function has been called. And you notice this is why we're using a Jest function here too, because I'm sure as part of this function, it's keeping track of how many times it's called. You know, so it's kind of like a powerful, uh, it's a powerful tool. But to actually call it, we've had to use the enzyme library to say, we're going to create an instance of this button and then simulate a click on it and see what happens. And if our button is behaving correctly, then when someone clicks that button, it will trigger the on click that we've passed into it. So just to show you, let's actually run these tests now. If I go back to my component testing folder and I run yarn test, We pass all of our tests, right? But watch what happens now if I don't pass that on click through correctly. So I'm going back to my component here on the left, and if instead of passing that on click through, I just pass an empty function through. We're going to run yarn test again. So to run all the tests, and you can see that one of them has failed, eight of them have passed, and what's failed is that it expected the jest function, the dummy function that we created, to have been called one times, but in actual fact it was called zero times. Now the reason we also have these little describes and stuff here is because you can see describe button, it actually helps the uh, console, the command line tool print it out for us, saying button triggers an onclick event handler when click. So we know what this test is about and we can see why it failed. So that's the first one that we've done there. Now, if I save this file, these tests will automatically, uh, when you run them, it will go in watch mode. And it will watch for changes um, on save, just like React does with hot reload. Let's look at a second test here. This one's pretty easy. We want to check that it uses a custom title. So we create a custom title. We create an instance of this button. Right? We use enzymes shallow to create a shallow render of this button. 
uh, we give it an on click, which is our no operator, because we don't care we don't care about the click anymore. But we do need to give it something because it doesn't have a default. And then we give it our title. Then what we do is we say I want to get the text of the button, and I'm going to check if that text I expect this text to be title. Now what is dot text? Dot text is not a object function of the actual React component that you made but it's an object of shallow. So with shallow, it produces a rendered thing. And if you call dot text on it, it gives you essentially like the inner HTML of it. If you think about it like that, this is a simplification of it here. We want to check if it uses the fallback title if none's provided. So we can copy and paste this test, except not pass a title in. And we can check if the title is click me exclamation mark, which it is here. We can check that it sets the provided mode. So if I do light mode, dark mode, right? If the mode's dark, it sets dark mode. So I check here, same thing. The button is a shallow of this. The mode is dark. Um, we check if the button has a class dark mode to be true. We expect this condition to be true. And then if uh, it sets light mode, if nothing else is provided. Um, and Yep, so you see the same thing here. So it checks if light mode's true in that case. Um, now, that's pretty basic with testing. You're, you're, if you're a normal person, I think you're probably going to have a very obvious question, which is, how do I know all these different things to be called? To have been called, to be, expect, and stuff like that. And you've got to remember that if it's to do with the shallow part here, then you're likely dealing with the enzyme library that we've linked, this stuff here. Because shallow, shallow rendering has an API, a set of API documentation things here where you can call lots of things on it, right? Like equals, exists, filter, find, get, um, HTML, key list, like we saw one before, which was text. We can actually look at what this is. Returns a string of the rendered text of the current rendered tree. Um, so I think I said before that it, it returns the element, uh, the children or something, but in actual fact, it's like, this renders on the screen and it looks like actual text. Like, let's get the characters for it. So all of these, all of this stuff, this shallow thing and interacting with the rendered items is part of the enzyme library. And all of this stuff here, the expects and the two Bs, is part of, um, uh, is part of the jest library. So if you like, you know, for instance, you Google like jest expect, Um, you will see that there's a ton of things you can call and expect, like has assertions, not array, um, dot not, dot to be, dot have been called, to have returned. So you could check if a function's been called, right? We've, I think we did a similar one. What did we do here? We did to have been called, I'm not, yeah, to have been called, um, to have returned, uh, to have length. There's a ton of stuff you can look through here. So very powerful API. So if you're dealing with the, the assertion part, right? That is where you go to the jest APIs. And if you're dealing with the render action part, you tend to look at the enzyme APIs. Now, the last thing to talk about here are snapshots. Snapshots are a part of testing where after a test runs, you essentially take a snapshot of the, uh, of the, the component, like a, like a copy of it. Think of it like a git commit. And the renderer library, which is the first thing we installed here, it's part of React Test Renderer, you use this to create a snapshot of a component, right? Like a button, a button in a certain scenario, a button with a title. And you can save that snapshot. And what these particular tests do is they render a button and then they compare it now to a previous snapshot of it, right? So if you think about like git commits again, it's like when the test runs, it creates a snapshot. Then it creates another snapshot, another snapshot. And when the next test runs, it compares, did this component look like the previous one? Now, what's the point of these snapshots? The point of these snapshots is to prevent uh, visual regression. And basically, it means making sure that your app isn't drifting or your components aren't drifting or changing their behavior without like you kind of being aware of it. And I'll give you an example, right? If we have these, these tests here, 
And if I change click me and I put two exclamation marks there, you'll notice that it will fail. Pretty logical. Right? Because, um, ah, sorry. Yep, let me just check this up quickly. You notice that it fails because it expects the button's text to be click me and it's actually click me exclamation mark exclamation mark. Now let me just reset these. Right? Um, in this case now, uh, let me update. Okay. Cool. So uh, watch what happens here. If I increase that with two exclamation marks, and I also increase my check to include two exclamation marks, the test will now pass, right? Because the actual tests themselves that are running are the same. But what you'll notice is the snapshots will fail. And you can see here six tests passed, but three snapshots have failed. And those snapshots are saying that, you know what, even though we passed the previous tests, uh, our previous understanding of what this component is in these conditions has changed. And you have two choices at this point. One is that this, this awareness that it's given you will either let you go, um, uh, okay, I've probably made a mistake here. Maybe I've ruined some tests and some code. Or you can look at this and say, hmm, um, I'm aware this change has happened, and as you can see here, inspect your code changes or press U to update them. So I'm going to press U now. So I'm aware that I put these two exclamation marks there, and I'd like to update my snapshots. And now all the tests have passed here. So the point of these snapshots is to avoid regression, right? It's kind of like just taking a moment in history. So that you can't, like, because that's the problem with tests, right? Like, <laughs> you write code and you write tests, but who's to say your tests are right? So it's a great way to make sure that, you you know, your tests aren't following broken code. And you can make sure you're catching on these bigger changes. Um, and this top part here is actually just writing tests for it. So they're the two big takeaways. The bottom four here are snapshots. Um, and the top five here are actual tests, testing the functionality of the components. That's how you'd write tests for a basic React component. Um, you can take this very far, obviously, and you can do it for a ton of components. We've only touched on the very basics of the API here. Um, when it comes to writing tests with Enzyme, you can do shallow renders, you can do full DOM renders, which render not only the, the outer component, but all of the inner ones as well. Um, it depends what you're trying to test, but uh, hopefully these examples will give you a bit of a leg up in getting your head around these things.